Okay, everybody. Hello. So happy you've chosen to be here. Welcome. This is the global community for adult survivors of complex trauma. I'm hoping that you guys can actually see this week. I figured out, found out that you could not see next last week. Um, hope you can see tonight, rather, because last week I figured out that you, you couldn't see and that the camera was sideways. Hello to Poppy, hello to Jeffrey and Anne. We're gonna do hello to Helen. So happy to see you. Hello to Hunter. Um, if you are hello to Guayanas, I will greet everyone else in just a moment. I just want you to know, hey, Pixie Painter, um, I've been burning the candle at both ends, so I'm going to sit here and I am going, hey, Malta, hey, Tabby Ba. I'm going to just sit here and hang out with you all and talk about self-care because, um, because self-care, <laughs> right? Um, it is, it is hard to really walk your talk when you're a person who shares about self-care if you have goals and things that you're trying to accomplish in your life. And I mean, like I was talking to someone recently over the last couple of days, a couple of different discussions actually. And you know, again, this might not be a popular thing to say out loud, but I would be remiss if I did not mention this out loud. Healing, CPTSD symptoms as a result of adverse childhood experiences, specifically complex trauma, meaning that you were traumatized by another human, there was an uneven power dynamic, there was an abuse of power, and you were unable to get away, either perceived or real, you couldn't get away. And so the abuse happened over and over and over again over a long period of time, and that was maybe when you were younger, and now you're an adult and you're experiencing really a lot of difficulties. Your relationships are suffering, your finances, your physical health, your mental health, your emotions are all over the place. Perhaps your finances are reflecting your inability to just figure out life because life is just really hard. Maybe, maybe it's affected your spiritual beliefs or you're not even sure what you believe anymore. Maybe you're in the midst of, midst of a faith crisis. Maybe your relationships are suffering. Um, I don't know, maybe your job is suffering. Maybe, maybe you're just attracted to a lot of toxic people and you're figuring out that, that a lot of the relationships that you've had in your life, uh, particularly recently, are all sort of a reflection of the relationships you had growing up in your family of origin or the home you grew up in or, or what have you. And you're just like, oh my gosh, this is all just such turmoil. And when you begin to sort of experience these aha moments, you know, I, I want to gently remind you that A, you're not alone. B, you can't be expected to figure all this stuff out on your own. I mean, if you weren't raised in a home where you had food, shelter, clothing, love, approval, connection, kindness, warm regard, and you know, you were taught life skills, then here you are, you're an adult and you're, you've are you been spending your entire life trying to survive and now you're like, oh, now I wanna live a life I enjoy. Oh, but wait, I've only been surviving my whole life. Now how am I gonna build a life I enjoy? I don't even know how to do that because I've been surviving the whole time. So that's what I wanna talk about tonight, you guys. I mean, how are we expected to know how to figure it all out if if, if I just described, you know, your reality as well as mine, how in the world are we supposed to figure it all out? How are we supposed to have it all figured out and, and live a life we love if all we've been doing our whole lives is surviving and navigating toxic relationships and trying to justify our existence on the planet and the fact that we take up oxygen? Like if we've been wandering around feeling like we're not good enough, we're unlovable, we're other than or different. Um, we've been treated like we're just a nuisance or you know, we're a bother to everyone. And then we sort of like apologize our way into 
relationships or existing on the planet and then we wonder why you know we're tired and we're exhausted and we just can't do all the things right like I was talking recently over the last few days a couple of different conversations actually and this is what I was what I was saying earlier is probably not going to be very popular and and that's okay I really am not here uh, to be popular obviously because it's taken me five years uh, to you know finally find my voice and figure out like uh, oh my gosh right um, like it's it's a full-time job healing from trauma let's just say it okay I'm, 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 I'm gonna stop tiptoeing around what I really want to say healing from trauma is a full-time job many of us on this channel <laughs> myself included, could have at some point or could, depending on where you're at in your journey, basically claim either full or partial disability as a result of trauma. Right? Like, I could legit ethically collect money from the government if I wanted to by telling the absolute truth about what it is that I live with every single day and be like, yo, sorry, I'm unemployable. I can't work. I am struggling on a regular basis and I am for all intents and purposes disabled. Then of course it's gonna be up to them to decide if what I'm saying is true or not and on some days I feel super awesome and I'm like wow look at me I'm living life like adulting all over the place and being responsible and I went to the bank and I made a deposit and I paid my bills and I returned my emails and I actually answered my phone and I responded to my work emails and I responded to my messages from my team and look at me I actually managed to eat a healthy meal today and like cool and i went and i i drove to a dentist appointment and i got gas in my car and i went to the market and i shopped for food and i actually remembered to hydrate and i got outside and i walked for a few minutes and yeah like now let me just explain that that's not all the time that's maybe like 1 20th of the time like, that's, like, let's just be real. Like, sometimes it's, like, 1 30th. Maybe that's, like, you know, one day a month. Or maybe it's two to three to four to five days a month. I don't know. It's between one and five days a month that I could honestly say that all those things happen in, like, the course of one day. And other than that, like, it's kind of a full-time job. Healing from trauma is a full-time job. So instead of me doing my full-time job of healing from trauma and just choosing to be like, okay, I give up, I'm disabled, here you go, here's my paperwork, figure out if you believe me or not, and send me a check so that I can just be disabled and at least be able to pay my bills. But do I do that? Oh no, instead I fight my way to try to get health insurance that I, uh, that I need and that I have not been awarded, but then I finally get the health insurance that I need. And then I fight my way to try to make it to my doctor's appointments. And then I try to conquer my fear of the dentist. And then I have five dentist appointments scheduled. And then I'm trying to like, you know, in addition to doing my full-time job of healing from trauma, while I'm basically partially disabled, I'm running a private practice where I help other trauma survivors. By the grace of God, I somehow know how to navigate my way through all the things that they're dealing with because I've dealt with them before. Go me. Woohoo! And then, as if running my full time job of healing from complex trauma and then running my private practice, which is a part time job, I then have another full time job where I'm running an organization where we reach like abuse and trafficking survivors in 180 something countries. Okay, so if all of that isn't enough, so now that equals, I don't know, if all three of those part time to full time jobs aren't enough, then on top of that, I'm like, oh yeah. And then I'm going to be a wife and I'm going to somehow try to be enough of a mom to where I show up for my adult children and actually remember to mail birthday cards on time, which I never do. 
and maybe I could somehow remember to reach out to my sister-in-law who's a wonderful human and return her phone calls or her text messages or maybe my niece I could actually respond to her message or their or her text message or what about my nephew or you know what about my my cousins that are actually you know it's like seriously how can we do all the things like how is it humanly possible healing from complex trauma is a full time job so yeah so how are we all doing hello to oh my gosh i can't see i'm totally blind poppy says athena breathe <laughs> Hello to Sarah, hello to Declan. Declan says, I so disagree with Athena. CPTSD is much easier than being mentally ill. Uh, okay, I politely agree and disagree with you, Declan. Thank you for your, for your comment. CPTSD actually is a mental illness. So I am mentally ill. So maybe we're just talking semantics. Okay, okay, you got me there. The people in America that use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Illnesses, 5th edition, versus the ICD-10 or 11, you're right, they don't acknowledge CPTSD as a legitimate diagnosis. But I'm, we're, we're, we're like picking peas here because I'm saying that CPTSD is living with a form of mental illness. So maybe we're saying the exact same thing. So I agree and disagree with you, depending on which side of the fence that you're, that you're on. But that's neither here nor there. What I'm saying is healing from complex trauma and living with mental illness is a full-time job, depending on the spectrum, depending on where it is that you fall, depending on what it is that you're feeling, depending on, on how debilitating your situation is, right? Like, Oh, it's just hard. I'm just saying it's hard. Which is why we're having an open community discussion about self-care. Like, is self-care easy for you? Like, I want to know, is self-care easy for anyone here? I would love to know. Ooh, Malta is watching. Malta's dog sitting. I, I want to know what kind of dog it is, too. Good question. Um, welcome to anyone. If this is your first time here, we're just having a very casual discussion. We show up here live every single Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, um, you know, we've been doing it for about five years now. And we all just kind of show up here and we hang out and we support one another. Um, oh, lots of people chiming in. It's not, it's not easy. It's hard. Yeah. Oh, I can't see your question. You're going to have to type it again. Sorry. Um, I can't see anything really. I have my glasses on and I'm just, I'm doing my best. It's like moving really, 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 really fast. Self-care is hard. Yes. Yes, I agree. It's great to see you, Hunter. Great to see everyone. Hey, Anne. Anne oh, it's moving so fast. Yes. Anne says self-care is hard as heck. Jeffrey says, it's self, is self-care easy for you? Um, no. <laughs> That's a no from me. Dang, I know, same here. It's really hard. Oh, is, is that Jenna, Jenny, Jenna, Jesse? It's my number one mission, self-care. Oh, good, it's my number one mission too. Hey, John Harvey. John, John Harvey says it depends on the kind of self-care. Vi says, I wish. Sh hey, Shanna. Shanna says flashbacks eat you apart. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Flashbacks do, they, they do, they eat you up. They, they, they eat you up and spit you back out. And so self-care is more like a battle, actually. Yes, I agree. Miss Beachboxer says, no, I have no desire to bathe, go out, clean up, or do laundry. Yeah, that's like all the type of self-care that I need to be doing. Hello. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me move my chair closer. I just can't see. You guys, I'm so blind. Vi says, I do like to play play as a part of self-care. Awesome. Declan says, I moved from mental illness to CPTSD when the amnesia broke and the memory started coming back. CPTSD, CPTSD is easier because it makes sense and gets better slowly. Okay. 
Well, I'm glad that it, that it is easier for you and that it makes sense and that it's getting better for you slowly. I'm very, very, very glad. Although I still believe that it's only a matter of time before it's a diagnosable mental illness. That's just my opinion. Anne says she needs a nanny. I would love that. Yeah, Helen says bit at a time. Shannon says, yeah, I've been catching up on the laundry the last few days. I haven't even realized I got behind. Guayana says, you have no idea how hard it is these days. I feel bad with myself for not keeping my promise. Oh, the pinky promise. I know we all pinky promise that we're gonna be taking better care of ourselves. You all, like we're, we're trying, you know what I'm saying? John Harvey says, self-care, deal with people is hard for me. Yeah, dealing with people is hard. Peopling is very hard. Hunter says, when people ask me about life milestones, I am not at yet internal. I internally face palm. <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> I know, me too, seriously. Is it Jesse? Hello, Jesse. Jesse says, with emotional flashbacks, it's so hard for others to know when in the when I'm in the midst, it's hard to know myself. Same here. Same here. I want to validate that for real. Cheryl says, hi, Athena. Yes, self-care is hard. It certainly is, right? Thank you, Cheryl. Angela. Hello, Angela. Angela says, not easy at all, unfortunately. She says, it's easier to not do it. I agree. I agree. It's easier to not. It's easier to stay busy. Numb it, stuff it, avoid it. Just do it. Just handle it all through busyness. That's what I do. If I keep going, 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 I'll originally crash, sleep, wake up, and do it again. That's been sort of my method or motto for about, I don't know, 40 years. Uh, you know, I'm trying to walk my talk, though, which is hard. Pixie Painter says, flashbacks, nightmares, and I can't think or sleep. Help me self-care, please. <laughs> I wish I could self-care for you. See, if I, if I could self-care for other people, I'd probably do it. But since I'm doing it for myself, like, I have a hard time doing it, right? Shanna says, don't downplay our suffering, Declan. Yeah, I don't think it's a competition either, you know? I agree. Hey, Victoria. Victoria says, gorgeous view, Athena. Wow, thank you. You're so welcome. It's a clear day today, so it's kind of cool. It was raining and dreary last week. Malta says, I struggle to meet my needs every day from the time I wake up and realize that I need to brush my teeth. The anxiety starts. Same here. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. Jesse says, imperative to keep up self-care and congratulate ourselves on even the small stuff. It's big for us. No shame. Yeah. Hashtag no more shame for real. Vi says, if I accomplish the one thing each day in the area, that's a win. Heck Yes. Poppy says, I'm not even at the point of sucking at self-care. <laughs> Care a lot about a lot, but I am still trying to put the self into the equation of self-care. That's a good way to put it, Poppy. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. Anne says, CPTSD is similar to our minds being held hostage. We seem okay from the outside, but going through hell on the inside. Absolutely. Yes, that's a really good way to put it, Anne. Guayana says, my question is this. I feel that I am suffering of doctor burnout. I need to go to too many doctors and I have no motivation to even call them. What can I do? Mm. Shanna says, it's triggering when others say CPTSD is easier. I agree, it is triggering and it is minimizing and it's not allowed, period. Um, so Guayana wants to know, I am feeling like I have doctor burnout. I have so many doctors I need to call. I have no motivation to call them. What can I do? Ooh, let's sit with this. I'm going to I'm going to glance away from the screen cuz I can't multitask if I'm looking at all the all the messages I will not be able to to think straight cuz you know. Thank you CPTSD. Um let's see here. Well, let's see. If I have all these doctors I need to call, I know what I'll do. I'll sit here right now, Guayanas, and I will ask myself what my husband would say. Because my husband is the epitome of a person that is like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right? Inch by inch, life is a cinch. Yard by yard, life is hard. So he is the epitome of someone who 
walks his talk. He starts a task, he finishes a task. He starts something small, he finishes it. He starts something, he finishes it. He starts something, he finishes it. And he just does little tiny tasks throughout the day. And then the projects are the things that I tackle because I like tackling projects. Why? Because I suck at doing the little things, you know, over and over and over and over again, like repetitive stuff. Um, it just plays into my, my trauma nature because I was so used to handling such big, 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 big things growing up. Like all, I, everything was like a big project. It was a monumental task to just like stay alive. So now I'm an adult and I love projects, big projects, huge, like insurmountable projects. I'll pull, I'll pull out every item in one of the rooms, pile it in a different room and then carefully replace and put back all the little items into the room that I dug everything out of and put it back exactly how I want it. And it will take me days. I used to be able to do it in one day. I can't do that anymore. Thank you, CPTSD. Um, you know, thank you, exhaustion. Thank you, anxiety. Thank you, dissociation. Thank you, PTSD, which is a legit diagnosis if we're gonna pick P's here. But like, I can't do it all in a day now. Now it takes me days or sometimes even weeks. But like my husband, for instance, he's like the king of, you know, what do I have to do? I know, I'll wake up, I'll brush my teeth. I'll put in my contact lenses. I know what I'll do, I'll have a cup of coffee. I know what I'll do, I'll sit with my wife, I'll have quiet time. We'll have Bible study, we'll have prayer time, we'll have intercessory prayer, we'll talk about our week. I know what I'll do. I'll respond to my text message to my sister. I know what I'll do. I'll go in and I'll wash my coffee cup and I will go in and I'll get ready for work. And then, you know, he'll just do little stuff. Like he's just so good. He's so good at doing all the little things in a big way. He does everything in an excellent way. So Guayanas, that being said, if it was my husband giving you advice right now, he would probably say, write down a list of all the calls you need to make and then just sit with the list, but only look at one name at a time. You can put them in an order of importance if that's something that helps you, you know, and just make, and just like maybe one call a day. Or maybe if you feel you, just, just tell yourself you're gonna make one call a day. And if one call a day is too much, maybe one call a week. And then when you're done making the one call, ask yourself, when would I like to make the next call? And you might wanna make the next call right away because you're feeling pretty good. Like you're feeling like you got to win because you got, you know, whatever. Or that one call could have taken all your energy and you'll be like, that's okay. I don't need to make another call until next week. And then so that's probably what my husband would say, Guayanas, because I can't give you my own lived experience advice because I get overwhelmed too. And I think I have burnout too. It's like so exhausting to fight for my own wellness, to fight for my mental health, to fight for my physical health, to fight for my relationship health, to fight for my relationships with my adult children and, and wanna, wanna show up for them in a healthy, responsible way. And, and to fight for my financial health and to, to fight for my occupational health, you know, with my career. And, and I'm, you know, it's a battle. Everything's a battle. And then my physical health, I got to fight for my physical health. I got to fight. I got to fight, 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 fight. I got to, it all just feels like it's uphill battles, you know, and none of it seems simple. But it's, it's a lot of it has to do with my perspective. If it was my husband, my husband would be like, yes, all that's true. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down the things that I need to get done and I'm just going to do them one at a time. That's it. Just one. Today, I just need to do one thing. And then when I'm done with it, I ask myself, when do I want to do this next thing? And then if I want to do it right away, if I check in with myself and I have the energy, then I'll do it right away. If I don't want to do it till the next day, I'll do it the next day or whatever. And you know what? Like these are the types, these are the types of things that we're taught when we're children. If we grow up in a home where you're actually taught life skills and believe it or not, kids teach themselves a lot of life skills. If they have all their basic needs met, they just learn, they learn by trial and error. That's what happens. Did you know that a lot of children that grow up in, in healthy or good enough homes in air quotes, like good enough as per Winnicott slash Pete Walker, um, or even, you know, kids who grow up with healthy attachment as per Bowlesby, like they are given the grace and the patience to make mistakes. They just, they fall down, they get back up. They're not shamed for falling down. They make a mistake, they try again. 
the only time that there is uh, some sort of trauma or or uh, negative connotation with making a mistake, you know, especially early on, is if someone shames them. Usually, it's the primary object, the parent or the family of origin. So, like for instance, my husband. I mean, he had all of his basic needs met and a lot of, you know, healthy enough, good enough families. Like, you know, they make sure that their children's basic needs are met. Food, shelter, safety, clothing, love, approval, kindness, warm regard, you know, all these things. And then, and patience, a lot of patience. And then what do they do? They, they try and they fail and then they try again and sometimes they get it right the second time sometimes they get it right the first time but there's no shaming involved like there's no sh there's no shame based communication going on in good enough homes nobody's perfect of course it's going to happen but you know there's there are ways to repair that like when my son was growing up i mean was i the perfect mother oh no i was far from being the perfect mother but if i was communicating in a shame based way or i lost my temper I was quick to apologize. If I made a mistake or I wronged him in some way, I would own it. I would take responsibility and I would change the behavior and I would ask for his forgiveness. I would. It takes a lot of humility to do that. A lot of people are not open to doing that, but I definitely did and I feel like I cultivated a very strong relationship which is evidenced by the fact that he's in his mid to late 20s and we're actually still in touch with one another. So, yeah, like I must have done something right. I don't know, but I definitely didn't learn it from my family. I just learned it by trial and error and reading way too many books and listening to books on tape and like cassette tapes and records and CDs and you know now I listen to podcasts and stuff but I don't know Guayanas if that was helpful or not I would do one at a time I would write it down and I would only you know tell myself that I just need to make one phone call that's it just one just one and I don't know I don't know if that's helpful is that helpful let me know if that's helpful Oh, you're so welcome, Guayanas. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. Yes, you're absolutely welcome. Yeah, let me know how it goes. <laughs> and then let me and let me know so that I can so that I can tell my husband Jim, "Hey, I gave somebody some advice that I thought that maybe you would give them because I couldn't give them any of my own advice." <laughs> you know, let me know how it goes. <laughs> be really happy <laughs> you know you know interestingly you guys Guayanas and everyone else who, who might be here um, my husband wants to join me in in working with me and serving our community like he works full-time right now in a job he's um, you know he, he works in the real estate industry and it's just very 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 busy and you know he's a principal broker for a real estate company and and it's just, you know, it's a lot, 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 lot to manage. But he sees how much joy I have and how much satisfaction and fulfillment. Um, and, you know, like he sees how much I absolutely love waking up every day of my life because I get to hang out with an amazing community and serve a community I love more than air. And he wants that, you guys. So if you're a praying person, would you pray that my husband would be able to somehow come and join us? Like my, the ideal situation would be that he would be available on like a telephone number on the cptsdfoundation.org website. And you'd be able to call in and ask for support. Or like usually, I mean, he only knows how to just listen and maybe give advice or, you know, he's not certified or licensed or anything like that. I mean, he would be like a pastor in air quotes. You know, like someone that would be in charge of like, uh, like a care, like he'd be like a, like a care minister, or like a care pastor. Um, like that would be his dream, you know? I mean, and not everyone in our community would be open to talking with a pastor or like a, a care person, but like, you know, those who are, I mean, I get a lot of people that, that would love to, you know, that ask me if we have like a pastor or someone that they could, you know, ask for prayer or support from. So, I mean, anyway, it would just be amazing. And I would love to be able to work with him because he's just an incredible human. So, 
Malta says, thank you for going through the list of things that we didn't have. I was told that I had everything growing up and I was left speechless. It was very validating to be with a group who understands, oh my gosh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome, you didn't have everything, Malta. If you had everything, you wouldn't need to be, you know, consuming content about how to heal from horrible stuff, you know? You didn't have everything. You didn't have everything and I wish that you did, but you didn't. I wish all of us did, but we didn't. Pixie Painter says, it's wonderful, Athena. It would be wonderful. I would love that. Yeah. Oh, I would love it too. It would be amazing. Oh, Angela, you're not late. You're right on time. Oh, thank you, Malta. Malta says, I'll pray for you both, Athena. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Malta. Thank you so much. My husband's name is Jim. Oh, yeah, thank you. It's wonderful to see you, Angela. Poppy says, I just scrambled my brain trying to word it. <laughs> oh, I missed it, I missed it, I missed it. I'll go back. Ooh, Anne says, Athena, yes, your husband as a prayer pastor would be awesome. I know, I'm hoping it would be amazing. It would be so amazing. It would be so awesome to work with him. He's such a, he's such a dedicated worker. Like literally has never called in sick in like 25 years, maybe once ever. Like, I wish I was joking, but I'm not. Like, it's almost to like a, to like a fault, you know? Um, Victoria says, I've done my appointments as you have suggested. I write them down a couple a week. One, if it is stressful or draining, and I will pray for you and your husband to join the group as a prayer pastor. Thank you so much. It would be so awesome. Yeah. Oh, it is great to see you, Angela. So awesome. Yeah, Sharon says, I think it would be great to have, have a gym to bounce prayers off of. Yeah, it would be amazing. Hey, David, so good to see you. Hello. Welcome. We're just talking about self-care. We're just talking about self-care. So, you know, interestingly, you guys, um, today, remember last week? Remember last week I shared with you that list of questions that I asked myself, like, a lot of the time, like on, on a regular basis, like maybe once a day or a few times a week. Um, all of those questions are on are, are a gauge to figure out how we can, be, you know, become safer people and show up in a way that is safe and healthy and not, you know, cultivating toxic relationships, but cultivating safe relationships. And so today, um, on the daily call, I host calls just like this, like we're doing right now. Um, only, um, only you know, it's not a, a picture of my patio, like casual with us just talking. It's on a topic. Every single day we have a topic. You can go to cptsdfoundation.org forward slash calendar. And then like we have topics. So today was boundaries and safe people. And I read that list and we talked about unsafe characteristics and you want to know what everybody added i was telling them hey what characteristics would you add one of the characteristics for unsafe people that they would add is um someone who changes like changes the rules of engagement or moves the goalposts or rips the rug out from underneath us like they act one way and then they change their mind right and then another characteristic that that a lot of our group members mentioned or one of them, one of them mentioned it, a lot of people agreed, was those who were unappreciative or not, not uh, like not grateful, like unappreciative or entitled, entitled. And I thought, wow, that'd be a, that's a really good one to add to the list, right? Am I entitled? Am I ungrateful? Do I move the goalposts? Do I, do I say one thing and do another? And, and you know, um, like there, there were just some really good suggestions. So, ooh, 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 also, I forgot to tell you guys, I wanted to thank you if you signed up for our texting program, our daily encouraging texts. Um, you can go to cptsdfoundation.org forward slash text, T-E-X-T. Um, our, our everything tripled. Like there was like a certain amount, like I think there was like, I wanna say like, I don't know, it was like, 50 or 60 and there's like more than three times as many of you now and we're just in the first week like we just completed our first our first week so um like thank you for all of you who decided to sign up it was amazing I hope that the the text messages serve you and help you and we're still working out the bugs 
we're still switching the wording around so that it feels safe and encouraging and we don't know what the little uh, random question marks are if you're receiving the text and you're like what's that question mark for like in the one today but um, but thank you to all of you who are signing up for their free resources and you know just like letting us know that you're that you're enjoying what it is that we're doing it just means a lot to me so thank you thank you thank you um, ooh, let me do a little screenshot here this is so pretty there I, I had to do a little screenshot now I can do that as a little thumbnail later um, there's this little gecko I'm trying to see if I can um, hey Andrew so good to see you welcome to anyone I haven't greeted by name hello hello <laughs> so there's this little gecko um, he just went out of this out of the the line of sight but last week right after we talked and um, right after we talked here on the live video last week there was this little gecko and I was like dang it I just ended the video I could have showed everybody this little gecko and now it looks like the same little guy um, and if he moves back out into a place, he's hiding right now so that he can try to uh, cap capture this little bug. But if he gets back into the, the line of sight, what I'll do is I will move the camera so you guys can see the little gecko because <laughs> he's really cute. <laughs> Hello, Connie. Oh, Jeffrey says, I love geckos. Oh, I do. I love how they speak too. They're speaking in your house. Their little sounds are so cute. Um, we have these little baby millipedes, uh, geckos, uh, gecko, uh, like, like the Geico, like the Geico insurance commercial, like the guy who's standing there and he's green. Um, those are real animals called geckos and they live here in Hawaii and they look like, they look like a lizard. Um, and, um, yeah, they're just a lizard, but they have this really cool thing like down like by like their, their what would be like an Adam's apple and it, it blows up really, really, really huge and really bright red when they're trying to like um, either scare something or like, um, I don't know, like maybe it's mating or something. I have no idea, <laughs> but, but it's pretty neat to like, to get a picture of or to get a video of, it's pretty awesome. So, um. They, yeah, they're little itty bitty lizards. <laughs> oh, oh, Anne was kidding. Oh, I didn't know you were, well, I know you said you're like in Texas. And so I don't know if y'all have geckos in Texas. My goodness. <laughs> they do have suction cup fingers. It's really cute. <laughs> I think it is really good self care to just look at the little geckos. <laughs> <laughs> and to just just watch nature you know just watch them you know what you know what <laughs> you know you know what I would like what I would like to do uh later on you know later on down the line once I you know build this organization out to where it's running and, and operating on all cylinders and then I help open up a outpatient trauma center um that, you know what, what I would love to do after that? <laughs> I would love to move somewhere um, where butterflies, uh, like I live in a little, a little village right now, like a little town within a village um, where there are a lot of butterflies certain times of year. And the only reason we don't have butterflies more throughout the year is because we don't naturally um, indigenously grow milkweed and milkweed is like the one thing that monarch butterflies eat and um, Vi's, Vi's inviting, inviting me to move to Montana. I can move to Montana and I can open up a milkweed farm and then I can just trollop in the butterflies every day. That would be super fun. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but um, I don't know if I grew milkweed here, like would it work? You know what I mean? Like, would it work? Like, would they all come here? Could they make it across the ocean? I mean, would it mess up? We have a very delicate ecosystem, all these little micro ecosystems, like throughout the different, like microclimates throughout the island. Like I live on the north or like the upper west side. And hey, Joey, 
so happy to see you. And then like, um, like this is up here is where they have the butterflies. And then like down in Lahaina on the west side, like, like the west west side, like right in like the Lahaina proper, like where our zip code is, like where the post office actually is. Um, like they don't have a lot of butterflies because it's really, 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 really hot there. And I don't think milkweed would grow there, but I think milkweed grows up here in Kapalua because it's 10 degrees colder and it's more moist. It's very, 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 very moist, very damp up here. And um, the area where the butterflies are is a little bit protected because they're in these groves of all these different trees. Um, like they have these Cook Island pines and these Norfolk pines and um, and then there's all these vines like lily koi and passion, fl passion flower vines and like citrus trees and then the butterflies all are like in there where the milkweed grows. So they have all their babies and then I don't know where they go. But anyway, I would love to grow milkweed and like feed all the butterflies. I think it would just be amazing. So, ooh, Helen says, I once had a red cardinal butterfly fly through my apartment. It was so, wait, oops, it was so memorable. Oh, it, it sounds like that would be memorable. That's amazing. Hey, Tabby Ba, I missed it. What's going on? Oh, Tabby Ba says, I'm struggling, so I'm not chatting much. Therapy is tomorrow, so maybe she can help me out of it. Oh, Tabby Ba, I'm sitting with you also, and I'm sending you lots of love. Lots of love and comfort and compassion. Pixie Painter says, thank you, Jeffrey. She's so beautiful and really loving i love relaxing with her she really helps me calm when i'm scared oh is that your pet is that your i missed it maybe that's like your dog or your cat jeffrey sherman says milkweed sounds like something i would be allergic to but i like butterflies <laughs> hello kira hello hello so good to see you john harvey says i find collecting butterflies a little crude by killing them to have to save them as a trophy. Oh, oh, I guess so. Vi says, I had a butterfly. It's on my plate and it looked pretty, but it was sad. I was sad it got killed. Oh, oh. Poppy says, we have gonna something dragon oh kimono dragons they're 79 to 91 kilograms and they can run at speeds of 20 kilometers per hour kilometers per hour and are a lizard but the length is 2.6 meters oh my goodness oh my goodness wow that is incredible that's a big lizard, man. Oh, Pixie Painter, it's her pet iguana. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, Poppy has a phobia of moss and butterflies. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I agree, they're better, they're better alive and flying free. I agree. Declan says, I was a monarch butterfly, not recommended oh well i love monarch butterflies um joey says hey athena i finally got some good news trauma therapist from my area was hired and will start in a few weeks can't wait going without trauma therapy has been rough i'm so happy congratulations joey yay that is awesome I'm so happy for you. I hope that it works out. Anne says, Athena, you can come to Texas and we can go for, go in for a ranch, a whole pasture for milkweed and the rest for horses. Yes! Oh, how amazing would that be? Oh my goodness, that would be so incredible. Komodo dragons are poisonous and dangerous. What? 
Sharon, are you serious? Oh my gosh, John Harvey wants to know, do the lizards eat small children? That's horrible. Oh no. <laughs> it is a good symbol for all of us changing from one thing to a beautiful thing. I totally, totally agree. Uh, Jesse says, I have a Buddha tree and it's known as a butterfly tree and it attracts them each year when it flowers. That's amazing. What's a Buddha tree? I'm squinting though. You probably didn't put Buddha. You probably put something else and I just can't read it because I'm getting old and I'm blind. I even have my glasses on. David says, remember that they have long tails to wipe you with and they can draw blood the first hit. What? Are you talking about those dragons? So, oh my gosh. CP, Vi says, CPTSD could be a butterfly flying in the milkweed for our mascot. Oh, that would be so cool. I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about wolves and cowbells and wasn't really sure what I'm going with, but I do love the whole butterfly. Like honestly, um, I have drawn up butterfly with like the dandelions, you know, those little dandelions that have flowers, but then sometimes they're the little white things that you blow and you make a wish. Um, Joey says, horses are so therapeutic. What an awesome idea, Anne. Yes. Can you imagine equine therapy? Amazing. Iguanas are long-tailed lizards. Ooh, yeah. Can you draw a butterfly with a with a dandelion? That would be awesome. You're such a good artist because I'm not. I'm, I mean, I want to be. I want to be. My gecko went all the way underneath this little area to wait to try to get this little millipede. So now I'm not going to be able to show you the little gecko. Did I say iguana? I meant gecko. Pixie Painter says, my favorite animal in the world is a dragonfly. They are like little fairies. The butterfly project is what helped me to stop self-harming. That is so awesome. You know what? Pixie Painter. Fun fact, on some of our videos that I shoot here, like in this same camera angle, where I'm just sitting here with you all hanging out and it's just like looking out at my patio or like the tops of all the trees. If you slow down the frame of the video, sometimes you'll be able to see the dragonflies because there are dragonflies that fly by. In fact, there's one right there. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Oh, oh. It, it just went, up. oh, now it's up. I'll tell you when it comes back. There's a dragonfly, there's two dragonflies that hang out right here on my patio. Here, it's coming back. Hold on, stand by. <laughs> oh, nope, it's, it's out of the frame. You won't be able to see it. But anyway, if you rewind it back to when I was talking about it, if you slow down the frames, you can see the little dragonflies flying by. There's another one. Oh, did you see it? It was right in the frame. There's two that hang out like right here, all the, oh, it's coming back. Oh, it's over there out of the frame with the other one. I'm telling you, they hang out like all day. Here's, there, oh, come back. Okay, it's gonna come. It'll, it'll be back in just a moment. It's like they know we're talking about them. It's so cool. And now I can't see my phone. I can't see the screen because I was looking outside and it's really bright and now it's like really dark. I'm gonna say, here comes one, here comes one. Here, oh, it's, it's in the frame kind of, but maybe a little bit too high. Oh, dang it. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Did you see it? It keeps coming back. I almost feel like I wanna like go like, let me go like, oh. There, you should be able to see it any minute. I'll tell you when it's coming. But then I can't see the phone because it's really bright outside and it's really dark in here, so. It'll be here, it'll be back in just a moment. They hang out here all day, there it is, there's one. There's one, I hope you can see him. 
there's another one. It, it's coming back, it's coming back. Hopefully it'll drop down. <laughs> Talk about self-care, right? We just get to sit here and watch the dragonflies. <laughs> like seriously. I need to get some water, you guys. I'm really thirsty. Yes, dragonflies are less scary than Komodo dragons. Now that I know that they're all venomous and crazy and deadly. <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna go get some water. And if I bump you guys, I'm really sorry. I'm not trying to bump you, but I'm, I'm at like a really weird angle here. Okay, I'm back. I'll try not to bump you. Oh, you're welcome, Connie. I don't know what I did, but you're so welcome. Painter says, when I sit in my garden, the dragonflies come and they sit on me. It makes me feel so, so worthwhile. Oh my goodness. That would be incredible. Whoops. Sorry, I'm bumping you. Ow. I hurt my knee. There we go. There we go. Milkweed is actually kind of pretty. Aw. Could you could you draw the butterfly with the with the dandelion though? Maybe with the milkweed on the bottom. Helen says, bless you, Poppy. There are two of them. They are probably like condos. Oh, Vice says, yes. <laughs> As if you need more stuff to do. Do it in all your spare time, Vi. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, Miss Beach Boxer's watching her hummingbirds. I wish we had hummingbirds here where I live. We don't have any. I brought all these beautiful hand-blown glass hummingbird feeders when I moved here 13 years ago. Over 13 years ago, I guess. Wow. Um, and we don't have any hummingbirds. <laughs> Oh, Joey says the buildings look like castles. <laughs> you know what? There are these residences down there. Um, they were built by the Ritz-Carlton to be full-time homes for people, like fancy, fancy-dancy homes. Um, and uh, they were bought out by the Montage, which is another boutique hotel chain. And so there are these, be there are these beautiful like hotel rooms, but they have kitchens in them. And I always tell my husband that to me, it looks like um, Greece, like the turrets in all those buildings in Greece when you see pictures, you know? Um, yeah, that's what they are. Ooh, Sharon says it's good luck when a dragonfly lands on you. Angela says I have to leave early tonight, but it was great to hang out with family tonight for a bit. Take care, everyone. Take care, Angela. Thank you for coming. Thank you for stopping by. It's always great to see you. Oh, there's another dragonfly. It just went by. 
Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Vi says, let's have a self-care badass resort at at those hotel rooms, that would be so awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Malta says it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming, Angela. Have a good night. Yeah, retreat. It's so expensive. It's crazy. I could never afford to stay there ever, ever, ever. Like, it. W it's just ridiculous. Like. It's more than like a month. It's like a month's worth of rent to stay one night <laughs> in one of those places. It's crazy. It is peaceful here. It is peaceful here, Joey, for sure. Wait, dragonflies bite? What? Oh. Oh, I don't like that. That scares me. I didn't know they bite. Do butterflies bite too? I've had a butterfly land on me before and they, it didn't bite me. Connie says, I was going to say that self-care isn't easy, but it's nice to know I'm not alone. Oh, you're not alone, Connie. You're definitely not alone. Self-care is hard. Self-care is hard. Helen says, I didn't know dragonflies bite. I didn't know either. Vi says no butterflies are nice. Poppy says if a bug of any kind landed on me, I freeze like a trauma response, but also have zero ability to use bug spray because I get overwhelmed and thrown into guilt and shame spiral. LOL, I'm tragic. <laughs> no, Poppy, LOL, you're human. <laughs> makes you human, not tragic. And Helen says, Connie, you're not alone. Oh, Anne says, no butterflies just have tongues. Yay, no teeth. That's good to know. You're not tragic, Miss Poppy. You're just human. You're just human, not tragic. Jeffrey says, I don't think butterflies can bite. They have that super long retractable tongue thing. That's all I know about them. <laughs> I think butterflies are just beautiful. And so are dandelions. Like, I don't know if you all can see, but I have all these beautiful little like yellow dandelion flowers here somewhere, if you can see them. I don't know if you can see my little dandelions. Can you see all my little yellow flowers? I don't know if you can see them. My little yellow, my beautiful little yellow flowers. They're all right there. They're so pretty. They're so pretty. And, um, but yeah, they're little dandelions. They're so cute. There's some, you could see them right in the, right in the middle of the shot there. They're so sweet. They're so beautiful. They just blow in the breeze. Oh, Vi says, we mow them here. <laughs> I do love me some dandelions, though. You know. Let's see if we can go over here and look at some palm trees. Something beautiful. Oh, maybe we can see. What are the other flying bugs that are similar to dragonflies? Dragonflies have four wings and the others are smaller. I don't know what they are, but there's a nice little view right there with some flowers. And the island, that island that you're looking at out there is called Molokai. Oh, Shannon says they're called mayflies. I don't know if I know what a mayfly is. Oh, Anne says you can eat dandelions. Vi says, I think it's fun to hang out with Athena on her porch. <laughs> Thank you. Though a bit triggering, Joey. Oh no. Hey, hello. 
I love me XOXO says, hey everyone. Great to see you. Helen says, the island reminds me of when I lived in, oh, I missed it. Dang it, it's moving too fast. The Hooterites make dandelion wine. Joey says, Tabby Vi, I didn't mean to trigger you. Uh, Poppy says, okay, I can totally love dandelions alongside the pack. LOL. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! You don't have to love the dandelions. We can all just politely, you know, disagree with one another. We don't all have to love the dandelions. Joey said, or I love me, XOXO says, me too, Joey. It's hard to go in public. You all, I have chores to do now. I'm in the middle of, of cleaning and I have a house project and I'm trying to clean my bathroom and I have people that are coming in from out of town. Oh, Connie says, I think that would be wonderful addition if Jim would join the foundation, Athena. Me too. It's our prayer. Yeah, it's our prayer. If you wanna if you wanna pray, that would be awesome because we really want that. Really, 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 really soon. It would just be amazing. But you know, a lot has to happen. I mean, without going into too much detail, like the work I do right now, I funnel all the resources, all the all the money I get, all of like the, the fees that I take in from private clients, I funnel that into the foundation to, to, you know, pay for software and all the things, you know? Um, so I can't afford to pay anybody yet, but we're, we're hoping at some point it'll happen. You know, we think it will, we're hoping. But it has been wonderful hanging out with you all. I look forward to seeing you back here and every single Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And if you like conversations like this and you like just, you know, hanging out with, with safe people, um, we do this every single day, 365 days a year. Um, and you can find out more about it if you want to go to cptsdfoundation.org. And if you want to sign up for free texting, if you have a U.S. telephone number, you can go to cptsdfoundation.org forward slash text. It's free. And we have a weekly book club um, that you can sign up for. And I think it's like five, I think it's five or ten dollars a month. I think it's five dollars a month. I don't know. Anyway, the funds that come in from the weekly book club, they all go into our scholarship fund where we provide daily recovery support to people um, who need a scholarship, who cannot afford daily recovery support. Or you can sign up for our daily calls at um, cptsdfoundation.org. I think it's, I don't know, you can click on daily calls. And then, um, yeah, but even if I don't see you over there on the daily calls or whatever else we have going on at the foundation, I will see you back here if you choose to be here next Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And um, I'm just super grateful I got to spend some time with you. So uh, please be kind and gentle with yourselves because you're worth it. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Good night, everybody.